Hello, welcome to the home of the Ghost Owl, and we're at our final episode for the Kingdom of Bretonia faction focus in Warhammer the Old World. And with all our faction focuses, the last thing we look at is are there any units that could be missing from the faction? Now, this excludes named characters because of timeline issues and, and things like that. But what we're going to be looking at is looking around both historical um, army books, but then also the total Warhammer game and seeing if there's any units in there that could or should or may make their way in the future into a Bretonian list. And Bretonia does have a particular lack of diversity of units. There aren't that many units overall compared to other factions. We see that in the rare categories, there's only two units. So overall, it's quite light on choice. So let's take a look at what's out there. Okay, there's not a huge amount, but it kind of does fit in the category. So first up, core, peasant mob, right? So we've got men at arms. Now, men at arms have a level of training and equipment. Peasant mob are basically like a zombie style horde, if you like, but they're alive. Um, but peasant mob is something we see in Total Warhammer. It's not in this faction. That could be something that's interesting in terms of... Um, you know, really ultra cheap unit, you know, almost drowning in, in bodies, you know, uh, which could be quite interesting with low model count knights and then higher model count infantry um, beyond what we see with men at arms. Um, so that, that could be interesting just to add a slightly different dynamic to the core. But rare is where I think it's really at. This is where I think Bretonia needs the most things um, uh, and choice. So Grail Guardians are in um, Total Warhammer. So, you know, in in the army book, Grail Knights are obviously in the rare category and the Grail Guardians kind of leading them. This is an entire unit of Grail Guardians. Could be interesting. Could be interesting as a unit. Um, we've got Royal Pegasus Knights. I think they're really quite interesting as a unit as well. So you could take your Pegasus Knights, you know, uh, paint them up better put some extra things on them uh and they can be quite interesting in the rare category as well as royal hippogriff knights as well giving a sort of a a, 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 a sort of that bigger tougher more diverse unit than you normally see in bretonia um you know at the moment it's, it's you, the only sort of thing you've got you've got your pegasus but actually a royal hippogriff could be a real different dynamic um, in, and, and really offer something different in a Bretonian army. And I think the rare category, having that choice in there, could be really quite nice. I, don't, I really don't think there's a call for having, you know, monsters or other kind of random things um, in the Bretonian army. It just doesn't quite feel right, but I could definitely see the Royal Pegasus Knight. You know, you've got the whole Royal Court, you know, of Bretonia and the kind of the way it sits. So the Royal Pegasus, Royal Hippogriff, I think could be really quite interesting. Um, and I say the Grail Guardians... Maybe, maybe not. Peasant mob, I think, is a little bit different as well. So, um, But not a huge amount. We've seen a lot of the other armies. They've got lots of stuff that have been missing. Actually, Bretonia has got a quite a small army list already in terms of choice of units, and there's actually not a lot missing that we've seen elsewhere. So uh, they've got nearly everything in it that you could think of you uh, that, that was in there before that we've seen before. That brings us to the end of the Kingdom of Bretonia faction focus. I hope you enjoyed this faction focus. We will be looking at the High Elf Realms next. Um, and I've been playing quite a few games with those as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting into that faction focus. And the aim is we should be getting the content out a bit more rapidly for that. Um, because we don't have a big summer break and family vacation and travel with work as much. So... Um, we will be getting to that and hopefully there won't be a gap, but too much of a gap between this faction focus and the next one. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why in the comments down below. And if you want to see more content, please hit the subscribe button. It's a big deal for me. It's totally free for you to do. So thank you for that in advance. You've been watching The Ghost Owl. I'll see you all very, very soon for some more Warhammer The Old World content.